Hello everyone, and welcome back to Crafted Creations. Today's video, we're going to do a little bit of kit bashing, or mashup build, if you will, of the Marvel Legends Rage and the Star Wars Black Series Gamorrean Guard. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make something from the Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1, uh, the Gamorrean Pit Fighter. Uh, in order to get started with this, you're going to want to check out the video uh, that I released previously on the boil and pop method. Uh, that's going to show you how to disassemble these two figures to get building uh, much, much faster and easier. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disassemble these now so we can go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Alright, so now that we've got them taken apart, uh, we're going to go ahead and start assembling them. Uh, but first I'm going to explain to you um, just how I went about taking these figures apart. Because uh, it was a little bit more advanced than previous uh, disassemblies that I've done. Um, first what I did the, with the Rage, um, his head pops right off without using the boil and pop. Um, so go ahead and take his head off and then... These figures both uh, use a harder type of plastic than most of the Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black series, so you're going to want to let them soak in the boiling water probably a good two minutes. Uh, I know in the previous video I said most figures 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, these particular ones um, are going to need to be soaking in there for a little bit longer. Uh, so I recommend two minutes. Um, that'll give them plenty of time. Uh, but the plastic will be very hot once you take them out. So a lot of the water is going to get inside the joints. And when you take it out, it's going to drop out on there. So don't want to risk burning yourself. Uh, use gloves. Shake these out before you go ahead and start trying to pop these. Um, but with Rage, go ahead and pop his head off first. And then once you uh, do that, you're going to want to take a screwdriver and... He has a post in there that goes ahead and holds that open. Uh, didn't pop out quite as easily because the post is made out of a harder plastic than some of the other figures as well. Uh, so what I had to do is take a flathead screwdriver, put it right there along the seam, and then just kind of push down on it and it should pop right off. You don't have to worry about taking the legs because we're not going to use that part. Uh, we're really just after the, the torso, the arms, and the neck. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and toss these pieces that we're no longer going to use. You're going to want to hang on to this part uh, for his belt that we're going to go ahead and incorporate in this build. Uh, the hardest part was with the Gamorrean Guard. Also going to recommend starting with the head on this one. Uh, the top part of the head should pop right off very easily. Uh, after that, this post right here is what holds the actual uh, jaw line on there to this piece right here. Uh, this is going to come into play uh, with the Rage figure. What we're going to end up doing is cutting off the top of the ball joint and we're going to do a little bit of dremeling. We're just going to dremel a hole straight down in there. Um, I used a similar technique with a custom uh, Mandalorian Season 2 Boba Fett that I made. Uh, drilling that hole should allow us to slide this uh, key slot in there pop the head back on and that will maintain articulation front and back as well as uh, being able to twist side to side. So you'll actually get a little bit better articulation um, compared to some of the other figures that they released. Um, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and set that aside. Now after you get the head popped off, you don't need to worry about taking the arms off of this figure. Um, let him soak for a good minute, two minutes torso should pop right off very, very easily. Uh, you have this very long peg in there that holds him, um, so you're going to want to swish the water around so that you actually do want to get some of the water inside that joint to soften this up. Uh, this post is made out of a softer plastic than the one from the Rage, so not nearly as difficult to get the torso off for this. Uh, once you pop that off, you should have uh, his little diaper underwear thing that'll slide right off and then uh, you have the fur that was in there as well. Um, I don't have that pictured here because I actually had to toss that in the dryer to uh, to get that dried out since it was soaking wet. wanted to get that fluffiness back into the fur in there instead of having that wet watered down look. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start assembling these. So for this build I'm going to keep uh, the studs on the wrist. We're going to go ahead and use the hands from the Gamorrean Guard. So we want to make sure he can still hold the weapons. 
and with the uh, joints that are on this one, you're actually going to be able to get some cool poses out of this once we're done. So we're going to go ahead and pop these back on. And I'll have to use a little bit of elbow grease because it is cooled off now, so it's not nearly as malleable as it was uh, when we had it first out of the boiling water. And then we're eventually going to do a little bit of dremeling uh, inside the torso as well because um, it doesn't have nearly enough space for this to fit all the way down. So we are going to need to hollow that out a little bit. Basically take a dremel, stick it straight in there, get some hollowness in there. This piece should pop right in. We'll start slapping the accessories back on. And then after that all we'll need is a quick coat of green paint, uh, some minor uh, details on there. We're going to end up painting these um, brown to match uh, the color that they are in the show. And then we're going to take some uh, little leather strapping and wrap that around the hands to give it uh, some cool little gauntlets there. Um, I just want to explain quickly how to go ahead and take these apart properly because I know it didn't uh, show these particular figures in that boil and pop video. So I wanted to let you know how to do that before we go ahead and, and start rolling on this custom. Alright, so first few things we're going to need, uh, going to need an X-Acto blade and your Dremel uh, with uh, some sort of smaller point uh, drill tip. We're going to want to make sure that we have control over the size of the hole that we create when we Dremel these out. Um, so first we're going to want to take uh, the X-Acto blade, we're going to want to cut this post off of the neck up here on top. Now, if you have the figure in straight out of the boiling water, this should be a little bit easier and softer plastic. Shouldn't be too bad. I uh, just may have to use a little bit of strength there. Nice and slow. And as always, make sure you're wearing safety goggles when you are using these blades. These do snap and crack very easily if you're not careful. You don't want to have any sharp metal flying in your eyes, so safety first, please. When you are doing these, you always want to make sure you take good care of yourself. You don't want to end up in the hospital trying to do something fun. So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and take uh, the, the belt and the bandolier from the Gamorrean Guard. Uh, this doesn't fit properly on the Rage. There's a lot of excess, um, excess strap here where the belt goes, but we're going to actually invert this and the part that goes around the waist on the Gamorrean Guard, we're going to cut uh, the part that goes over the shoulder off and we're going to have this go around Rage's shoulder. It's going to fit a lot better and it also adds a little bit of detail with that hook on there. It's going to look a lot cooler once you get that on the figure. So let's go ahead and cut off this extra part that we're not going to use here. And easier way to do this so you don't miss that ring. We're going to go ahead and do it from the side where the ring is visible so that way you don't cut off any more than necessary. And then on this side you can go ahead and just go straight across Boom. There we go. That should give us a pretty good start. If it's uneven, you can just go ahead and whittle away the little little bit of extra plastic there. Nobody's even going to see that. Alright, so prep work's pretty much done with the blade. We can go ahead and put that away. And now for the Dremel. Um, first part we're going to do is we're going to want to start with the head to make sure this part fits. So go ahead and get your Dremel turned on. We're going to want to use a low speed so it keeps that from skipping so we don't go ahead and ruin our figure. But basically what we're going to do is just go straight down. See how it skipped like that? Uh, if you keep your finger over there, on lower speed a Dremel is not going to hurt you if it doesn't. Make. Once you get a little bit of a hole in there, we're going to go ahead and pick up the speed so that will dig in quite a bit faster. But you always want to start and get a nice groove in there until it stops skipping. So now we got a little bit of a hole, we go ahead and pick up the pace on the Dremel here. So 
If it starts to twist, I always want to keep that straight up. Go ahead and start again until that works its way right in the bottom there. And as the Dremel goes, the plastic should heat itself up so that it will actually start to dig out quite a bit easier. Should be good enough. Uh, we may have to toss this in the boiling water if this doesn't fit now. Let's see. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in the boiling water real quick. Alright, so I went ahead and boiled it and popped the head on and it sat a little bit too high for my liking. Um, so what I ended up doing is once we hollowed out uh, that top part, most of the inside uh, part that was connecting it you can just take a flathead screwdriver it was just kind of sitting like that just take it in there this popped right out uh, what I went and did is took the Dremel and Dremeled it out a little bit wider um, so that way almost all the way through just left a little bit of piece so that way it would stay connected and for that reason what I wanted to do is if we just left that peg out and stuck the head inside you get a pretty good look from the front, uh, but it stays really loose, and I don't want to have to do a ton of gluing or using Sculpey to remodel the neck, because it'll lose some of the articulation, um, and also leaves a pretty nasty looking gap in the back there. So hollowing this part out, if you go ahead and put it in there, leave it angled towards the front, you can go ahead and take that peg shove that right inside. If you push it down it'll snap back in place. That's gonna fill that gap in the back there nicely and then you'll also maintain up and down articulation side to side and that gets a pretty good look on there. So with the uh, part that we cut off there we're gonna use the belt piece as the body strap. We're gonna throw Rage's belt on there. That'll kind of give you an idea of where where we're going with this custom. Um, for the painting purposes we're going to take the head off when we paint the body, uh, but I just wanted to show you how that's going to look. Uh, next part we are going to take that Dremel again and we're going to hollow out the middle so that way he'll drop right on there and we can go ahead and start building our pit fighter. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and start to Dremel out this bottom part here. Just wanted to put those on, see how it's looking so far. We're going to go ahead and use a Dremel. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did with the neck part. Um, just go ahead and shove the Dremel down in there. Work it around a little bit. We just want to hollow it out enough so that the ball joint fits. We want it to fit tightly in there, so we don't want to hollow it out too much. So we're going to go ahead and use the boiling water again and see if that will fit in and snap in there and see if we need to shave off any of the peg or if we need to hollow that out anymore. All right, so right one back. thing that I noticed when I did the test run, um, the legs from the Gamorrean Guard uh, were just way too beefy for the upper half of this rage body. The thighs in particular, uh, so what I went ahead and did uh, while we were away was I went back, I took the rage legs, snapped him back in the torso, used the boil and pop to pop off the calves of uh, rage and his boots off, did the same thing with the Gamorrean guard. Uh, luckily these two figures use the same uh, joints, so it actually fits really really well. What you'll have to do is use the peg from the Gamorrean guard. It actually fits really really well. Because um, uh, that peg uh, that Rage has in his boots is a lot thinner and it won't fit uh, all the way through both sides on the legs here. Um, so you'll have to use the one from the Gamorrean guard um, and then push that all the way to get those back. Um, 
The caps are a little big, but honestly, it's fairly proportional, and I know some people who work out quite a bit that have gigantic calf muscles, so from a standing position, this is way, way better um, than it was before, and so far, you can see what we've got here. Uh, this is kind of how our build's going. Uh, once we get this painted, it's going to blend much better, and it'll be barely noticeable, so just wanted to update you guys on the changes that we had to make there to make this custom uh, fit much more, uh, much more realistic proportions. Alright, so now that we've taken him apart again, we can go ahead and start painting. Uh, for this, we are going to use uh, Folk Art Bright Green, we're going to use Apple Barrel Spring Green, and we're going to use uh, Jet Black from Apple Barrel. Um, the Mandalorian Pit Fighter in uh, the episode is a little bit brighter than the one seen in Return of the Jedi. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Spring Green as our base coat. And then we're going to dry brush uh, the bright green on top of that to darken him up in, in some of the shadowy spots and darker spots. Now that we've taken him apart again, we can go ahead and start painting. Uh, for this, we are going to use uh, Folk Art Bright Green, we're going to use Apple Barrel Spring Green, and we're going to use uh, Jet Black from Apple Barrel. Um, the Mandalorian Pit Fighter in uh, the episode is a little bit brighter than the one seen in Return of the Jedi, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Spring Green as our base coat. And then we're going to dry brush uh, the bright green on top of that to darken him up in, in some of the shadowy 
spots, the darker spots. Um, so go ahead and toss in our spring green and medium sized brush. Add a little bit of water on your brush there so that paint flows a little bit better.
that. So let's go ahead and start giving him our final coat. We can go ahead and paint the hands uh, finally. I like to do those last just because it gives you something to hold on to. crafts clear acrylic sealer um, this is a matte finish just basically what that does is it's gonna keep the uh, paint that we've put on there and give it a protective coating so that way when we move the joints around um, it, it'll maintain articulation but it won't uh, rip off all the paint that we've applied on there as you move the pose the figure on there uh, but basically what you want to do is keep uh, keep the can about two to three feet away from uh, your your product um, always spray it off first because if you get any gunk in your nozzle, it'll just spray globs on there and that's going to ruin your project. Um, so always spray off the excess, make sure it's got a nice, nice smooth spray. Uh, keep it about two, two and a half, three feet depending on the size of your project. And then basically just mist it over the whole project, let it sit. This stuff dries pretty fast. When you do this in a humid area, it might maintain a little bit of tack to it. Um, so the heat gun's a good way to kind of get that, get rid of that. Um, but if you do it outside, uh, low humidity, hot summer day, this stuff will will dry very, very nicely. Um, so we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna slap some of this on the project, and then we'll come back and give it all the finishing touches. All right. So we went ahead and sealed it up and touched up the little spots that we were missing. Uh, so now we can go ahead and start dry brushing the darker shade of green. Uh, this one we're going to use uh, the Folk Art uh, Bright Green. This is not quite as bright as the base coat that we used. And we're going to go ahead and actually darken that up a little bit with a touch of brown. Alright, so we're going to take some of this brown and we're going to put it in our empty spot here in the palette. We're going to save uh, the leftovers so we can do the straps, but we want to get the uh, shading done on the part for the body because that's going to allow us to do uh, the strap a little bit easier without having to worry about getting the green paint over the top of that. 
So we're going to go ahead and take some green. Go ahead and mix that in here. Gonna use a thicker brush for the mixing portion of this. Grab some water. Drop that in there. That'll make mixing quite a bit easier. And as always, when you go through this, make sure that you mix until all the air bubbles are out, because otherwise you're going to get that bubbling up on your project. So for the dry brushing, we're going to want to get our excess paint, most of that off of here, until you get just a very light dusting. And we're just going to come in here, and you're just going to want to highlight and get some of the surface areas in there. Now as you do this, you'll notice that the lighter shade of green is going to be underneath where the, the shadows should be. Uh, you don't have to worry about that because we're going to use that washing technique that we used in the previous videos to darken those areas up a little bit. We mostly just want to get some texture added on here to make it look more natural um, and have some of the uh, imperfections and discoloration that, that skin would have um, under natural lighting. Having that green undercoat uh, when this hits the light will also give it a little bit of depth and dimension and give it an almost a natural looking highlight on there too when, when you get into certain portions. spots here. Now with the dry brushing for the base coat, uh, we did go um, with the direction that your eye flows. Uh, for the dry brushing, you can go uh, in the opposite direction because that you want it to stand out more and create a little bit of a highlight. So that'll help you scratch the, just the surface area instead of going into the grooves. Uh, the grooves, we want to save that for when we do the washing technique um, to fill in the shadows there. We can actually start doing some of the washing now on the legs here. Uh, what we're going to do for that is we're going to take some of our jet black Just take a little tiny drop of it, put that in some water, mix that with some of our green. You want to make just like one little shade darker. And then with the excess, take a drop of water. We're going to water that down quite a bit. What that does is that's going to allow it to flow into the cracks. You 
I'm going to just touch that in right where those muscles are. wrinkles and that will bring back some of that texture that you got washed out when we went and did our base coat So in the Mandalorian, uh, the f pit fighters had a little bit darker circles around their eyes. So we're going to go ahead and use a fine tip brush. We're going to take some watered down black. And we're going to go ahead and just drop some of that right around the eyes there. Let's go ahead and finish with the wash on the face there. Go give these uh, another uh, quick spray and then we're going to finish up the detailing on the leather straps. Uh, after that we're going to go ahead and just uh, change the wrist uh, bands a little bit and we're going to go ahead and give him some detailing, some leather strapping on the arm bands there and then we'll pretty much be wrapping it up. Alright, so we got them all sealed up there with the clear coat. I uh, went ahead and touched up the underwear part too from the little green splotches that we made when we were painting the legs. Before we do that, uh, before we start assembling him together, uh, we need to uh, paint these uh, brown before we go ahead and put those on. So if we try to do that after, you don't want to risk uh, getting any paint on the chest there. So we're going to go ahead and mix up a dark muddy brown with some of that black that was left over. Go ahead and pop some water in there so that doesn't dry out. And then since it's already black uh, plastic, all you really have to do is just dry brush a little bit. The black underneath will actually uh, show some pretty good texture there.
clear coat on the belts. We're going to go ahead and just touch up those little spots there with some of this bronze. And for this, what you can do, a very easy way to paint these, if you glob, uh, let's see, let's use a bigger brush here. Take off all the excess water. If you take this and you glob it, just take the brush at the very top. And if you dab, it should just go right down there. together nicely uh, pretty much all we'll have left is to go ahead and finish up the wrist gauntlets add some leather strapping paint the straps down there at the bottom and then we will have our Gamorrean pit fighter let's go ahead and do the straps on the legs now go ahead and use that leftover brown folks he is all finished up while we were away went and had and added some faux leather strapping that I found at Walmart uh, some cloth that I just cut into thin strips uh, glued a bit on the inside part of the arm to where it hide where I glued it down wrapped one strip across and then did the same thing on the upper part of the forearm and then went the opposite direction and kind of crisscross so it would give it some texture and make it look like it was it was a wrap on there uh, also cut a rectangular piece and gave him the head flap on the back. That'll kind of blend in uh, the head with the body shape a little bit better. But he is all finished. The Gamorrean Pit Fighter from Mandalorian Season 2. If you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. Uh, I'd love for you to follow me. I'll be doing a giveaway when we hit 100 subscribers. Probably be giving away one of my customs or uh, some hard to find Star Wars Black Series stuff. 
Uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you and what you think of my work. If you know anyone that likes this kind of stuff, definitely share share the channel around. I'd love to get some more uh, followers and some more comments from everyone. I uh, hope to see you guys soon, and as always, stay crafty.